All right, so there is a thousand ways to use DocuSign. Um, it's, it's so hard to teach because there is so many different ways to use it. And I don't like teaching you multiple ways because then you combine them in your head and can't get from one end to the other end. I'd like, I mean? I'd like to learn it from starting from inside command yeah. to words. Okay, so that's the way that I teach it because that's the way that Keller Williams intended it to work. So it's linked to opportunities in command and gets you through to DocuSign for you to obtain signatures. So that's the way I'm gonna do it today. Um, I'm not saying that it's the right way, I'm just saying it's the way that Keller Williams um, intended for you to use it. So, so may I just ask Aaron, so eventually, mm -hmm. uh, if not, maybe a lot of people are doing it now, are you saying that um, this is the way, is it easier for the admin staff? Um, for reporting no. to the admin staff? No, it doesn't make a difference to the admin. Okay. Um, the reason why I think it's important to continue teaching it this way is because eventually, um, instead of emailing listings at kwhalifax.com or sales at kwhalifax.com, you're going to be submitting paperwork through command, That's through right. opportunities. Right. The other reason I believe that it should be done this way is because before, because obviously I wasn't using command, we were going in and we were creating uh, rooms in DocuSign. And then, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. I got my people to sign. All's great. But then I jump in command to go, okay, how do I use this? Uh, yeah. Put my person in and go, okay, how do I connect? And, and there are issues when you create a loop without command. There are issues with having things connect. It's, yeah. it's just, it, it's like command wants to create a new loop for yeah. you. You already have a loop designed and you're going to create unnecessary loops um, without connections. And right. it could be done that way. And you, yes, you can pull files over if you need to, but it's just, it's unnecessarily difficult. Yeah, it creates backwards. a mess. It does. It, it creates loops that are unnecessary, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, wrong. so we're going to go through wrong. it from uh, command. So the first thing is to make sure you guys can see my screen again, right? Yes. Oh. Yes, we can. Okay. So up in the top right corner, you're going to click on your name and settings, and you're going to make sure that you have DocuSign connected to command. So in your list of um, integrations here, you will see DocuSign. And if you see disconnect account to the right of it, you're set up fine. You don't need to worry about it. You're all good. So if how does this, how does this um, affect uh, admins if they need to go in and do pull, pull off files or do, um, they have it, do they have to have it connected or can they just go in and see our stuff? Anyways? It depends on how you have your team set up. Does your admin have your their own account or yeah. do they log into yours? They have their own. Um, no, it shouldn't affect them because if they're not creating rooms, then it doesn't matter. Okay. But if they're creating rooms, then they should have it connected. Um, so if you see disconnect account, you're good. Don't worry about it. Um, if you see connect account, then it's not connected. If you have your DocuSign account created, you can click on connect account and it will pop up for you to log in. Um, so you just enter your email address and your password and it will connect them. If that doesn't happen for you, let me know and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom and get it sorted out. Okay, so to use DocuSign starting in command, you have to create an opportunity. But in order to create an opportunity, you have to be able to connect a contact to the opportunity. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that you have at least one contact in there now, in real life situations, you should be using your contacts to have your contacts in there and you should be using um, the actual client that this is related to. If you're following along right now by doing it, you can just put yourself in. I'm going to use Alex um, as my client. So we're going to go to opportunities. We're going to create a new opportunity. 
So like I said, um, eventually you're going to have to submit paperwork to Jess, Lynn, and Joy through opportunities. Um, so you should really get used to making them and they do have a lot of benefits. Like it's a pipeline for you. So it's calculating your income over here. Um, it's keeping track of all of your opportunities to make money. So you're not forgetting anybody. Uh, you can make sure you stay in touch with them. You can remember where you're at with them and you just move them through your pipeline. So I have people in my cultivate stage. Um, then, so I've been cultivating Suzanne and then she calls me and says, okay, I'm ready to list my house. Can you come over? I want to interview you. All I have to do is drag this card up into the appointment phase and she's moved to appointment. So here she is here. Okay. So you should be using opportunities. It is important. Um, so I'm just going to go back and create a new one right now. Erin, before you do that, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, will you go over into contacts for a moment? Yeah. So I've been having an issue. So I did this with one of my clients. And so click on Alex's name. Mm -hmm. And when you're here, do you see a click on opportunities button? It allows you to create an opportunity from here, but then it doesn't yeah. connect it. Doesn't it's connect like it where? It, if I go and I look in opportunities, my it's opportunity that I just created this way wasn't showing up and I had to create a new one. Okay, let me just test that super quick. I'm just going to go back to opportunities now. Because I put all that work in and then I come over here and I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> that is not good. Uh, okay, so that didn't, sh oh wait, that should be five. I think it's, yeah, it's there. Hmm. Interesting. Another note, uh, when you're back on the opportunities homepage, you can click on all opportunities. And it might be easier for you to find. Mm, yeah, I looked there. This All way. Right. I'll play with it a little bit. So essentially, yeah. clicking opportunities through the, the, the contact or coming here and creating one, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to create one. Um, so yeah, like I just did, you can go into your contact, click the opportunities tab on the right and create an opportunity from there, or you can come to opportunities and create an opportunity here. It's the exact same thing. Um, it really doesn't matter at all. So when you're creating an opportunity, uh, all of you only belong to our office. So there's no other options for you there. Um, team will be grayed out unless you are on a team, um, then all of you should only be on one team so that your team will be your only option. Um, opportunity type is basically you're just choosing if it's a listing or a buyer. Um, owner is only, like I only have myself as an option because I'm not on a team. If you're on a team, uh, that basically means, do you, the agent, own it or does your rainmaker own it? And that's between you and your team, how you determine that. Maybe don't we, have, to, don't we have to have them um, click the team owns it so that the team, doesn't that share it with the team? Can see it. I think so. Um, and not, if, if we in our settings have it clicked that they're not allowed to own their own opportunities, that yeah. won't come up with their name. It'll only exactly. have a name, correct? Okay. Yeah. I'm quite sure. Actually, Angela, Eric Coleman and I are doing a call today to start like diving into team stuff. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep you updated on what we discover. Great. Thanks. Um, so here's where you connect your client. So you can just type in their name. Or like I said, you can go into the contact card and create the opportunity in there and that will already be filled in. Uh, then co-seller, so that's basically if it's like a couple selling the house, you can put the other person there. 
opportunity name is important because when you get to DocuSign, your room in DocuSign will have the same name as your opportunity. So if your client is selling 123 Main Street, you might want to name the opportunity 123 Main Street. If it's a buyer, you might have to keep it with their name. Up to you. Um, just because I get confused of what I'm doing, I'm going to name mine this, which doesn't really apply for real life, but it helps me when I'm trying to figure out what I've done. Um, custom tags is optional. Uh, basically, if there's no red star, you don't have to fill it in. So custom tags is for your organization. Um, maybe you have one of those clients who refers you a ton of deals and you have a tag called referral from Bob and you just want to keep track of all of the deals that you're doing that came from Bob. Or maybe you did a home show, you gathered contact information and some of them are turning into deals. And so you have a tag called home show April 2020. Um, that way you can keep track of how many transactions you do based on that home show, uh, basically to see if it's worth doing again. Custom tags are up to you. They're for your organization. You don't have to use them. Totally up to you. Estimated close date, obviously, um, if this is someone you just heard, yeah, I'm thinking about selling my house maybe in a year. You have no idea what the close date's going to be. Um, so you can leave it blank. You can fill something in if you want to, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you might have that, like a military client, for example, that they're leaving on this date. So you better have that house closed by then. So you can put in a closed date. Again, up to you. Listing price. Again, it says estimated because you don't necessarily know. Um, that is more important because in order for your sales pipeline to be able to calculate your GCI, it needs to know the sale price or it can't calculate commission. If you leave zero, you're making zero commission off of it, it thinks. Um, so do put it in there, you can change it in the future. Commission rate, again, we're gonna hope it's 2.5%. Again, it can change in the future, especially if you're dealing with a buyer and they end up offering on a property that's offering 2% instead of 2.5%, you can change that. But it is required to calculate the commission. So then the phase, um, so that's these bubbles in the pipeline. So cultivate, appointment, active, under agreement, and closed. So cultivate would be someone who you meet and says, yeah, we're thinking about selling, but it won't be for a while. You're gonna put them in the cultivate stage. They're just someone you don't wanna forget about. You wanna make sure you stay in contact. So when they do decide to sell, you're top of mind. Um, appointment would be if they called you to make an appointment and active would be if you have the active listing. The only reason you can, these are the only three options from here is because you should have the opportunity created by the time that it's active. You shouldn't be putting it in once you have an accepted offer on it or once it's closed. You should be doing it before those phases. Um, I do want to point out a big reason that command was built is so that we can own our own data and use it to help our businesses. Um, so I know creating an opportunity does, it requires a little bit of work. So those cultivate opportunities, you might just say, oh, I'll put them in when they actually become something. Um, but the system isn't learning you. Uh, if you're doing that, you really should be putting them in the cultivate stage, then moving them to appointment, then moving them to active so that it can learn your habits and help your business. So it's going to know if you're using it properly, it will know how likely you are to get paid on opportunities that you put in the cultivate phase. Cause you're not going to make, you're not going to close them all that you put in that phase. You're not going to win every listing. You're not going to close every listing. Um, but that's why it exists. So it can learn you and help you. It's going to give you proper percentages of likelihood of you getting paid if you give it the correct data. Okay. So then within the phases, there are stages. 
um, you can edit these. Um, there's been a couple trainings on those. So I'm not going to go into it right now just because I want to get to DocuSign. Um, but there's different uh, stages within each phase. Basically, like where are you at in the Cultivate? Where are you at in the appointment? Things like that. So once you create the opportunity, it brings you into the opportunity. So like I said, there's an edit button here. So you can edit all that information that you've put in. So maybe this listing got reduced to 225. It's important to keep the right information in there so that your pipeline is accurate. So to get to DocuSign, you're gonna click on the Documents tab. And this button right here, Start a Transaction, um, that's what takes you into DocuSign. If you've already created a room for this um, opportunity, it will say go to transaction. It still takes you to DocuSign. It's the same thing. You end up in the same place. Just because there isn't a training April 9th room in my DocuSign yet, it knows it needs to create it. That's why it's saying start. Uh, just a quick note, when I said eventually we're going to start um, giving the office paperwork from opportunities, it's going to be right here on the documents tab. So if I chose, the, chose that this is a residential listing, I'm going to attach my FinTrack, attach my working with a realtor, attach my SDBA, and then submit to MC. And it's going to go, this is a listing, so this will go to Jess for her to input the listing. She can then like write notes on the on each um, document and say like missing a signature or um, we can mark them as not um, inputted. Like if you didn't give us the PDS, she can put a note on there that we need it. Um, we're just trying to figure out notifications on both the agent end and the office end so that we don't create a mess, missing listings and missing deals, but we're working on figuring it out so that we'll be stopping emails, you'll be uploading everything here, and then our office will be paperless eventually. So just a heads up that that's coming, but don't start doing that yet. We're gonna roll it out slowly, test it with a couple people first. Okay, so back to DocuSign, you click start a transaction, and it's going to open DocuSign. So this is why it needs to be connected in your settings so that it knows where to bring you. So when I, when DocuSign opens, it will have created the room for me already. So you'll see here, um, I'm already in a room called Training April 9th, because that was the name of the opportunity. So opportunity names are important for organization. It comes into DocuSign. So it's really important to make sure you're naming them proper things. So we're already, it puts us straight into the documents tab. So we can add our documents that we need signatures on here. So you just click add from computer. So ideally you would have filled out your documents in web forms, just downloaded them, and then you can upload them from your computer. So I think I have some on my desktop here. Okay, so I'm just gonna add two of these for right now. So I have my documents in here. So now I'm gonna go to my people tab and I can add my people here. So my people could be my clients, could be my client's lawyer, could be the agent on the other end of a deal, um, could be anybody related to this transaction. Aaron. Um, yeah. Why, doesn't, why doesn't it pull the, the, our client's information in from command? I don't know. I wish it did. Sorry. <laughs> so I think it, it's coming. Anybody here, that has, do it right now. Sorry? anybody here that has to sign is who you're looking for. Anybody? anybody who has to sign or anybody you have to send these documents related to this transaction to. Yeah. Like a lawyer doesn't have to sign anything, but you can add them in here so you can easily send it. So you just click the invite button and put their uh, name and email in. If you've sent them things before, they will uh, populate. 
So transaction side listing and he's my client. So I'm also going to add Jess here. So I am doing this listing. I obviously have to send Jess the listing paperwork once it's done. So I'm going to add her in here. I'm just also going to name her as client. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I have myself in here. I'm the agent. I have Alex, my client, and I have Jess just as like the listings administrator. So um, what would be the purpose of adding her in if, is this like prior to us being able to use the M, send to MC button? Yeah, exactly. So like if you were doing a listing today, we're still emailing it to Jess. So you can add her here and so DocuSign can send it for yeah, you. So once the MC button is up and running within the office, then yeah. you wouldn't have to do that because it would exactly. just work through that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so KW admin is always going to be there. Um, that's Linda's account. She, like, if she logs in, she sees everybody's rooms. Trust me, she does not log in. Um, she doesn't look at those. So just make sure you're sending them to us. So in order to send documents, you go to the envelopes tab. So I know this is extremely corny, but think of real mail when when you think of DocuSign. So every time you want to send a document, it has to go in an envelope. In real life, if you were mailing your client documents, you can't just put them in the mail without an envelope. Or if you forgot a document, you have to get a new envelope, you have to start a new envelope. You can't add to an envelope after it's gone. Um, or if you're sending it to somebody different, it has to go in a new envelope, okay? So every time you're sending documents, you need to create a new envelope. So we're just gonna click the new button. It's gonna open it up. So envelope name, um, remember your room is your transaction. So you don't need to call this 123 Main Street. It's, that's the name of the room. So we already know everything in this room is about 123 Main Street. So we're gonna say this is the listing docs. Okay, so then we're gonna add the documents that we're sending right now. So because I added them in the documents tab, I can just click on room docs and it will give me those two documents to choose. If you didn't add them in the documents tab, you can also upload them from here. So I'll just add that third one this way. Same thing, doesn't matter which way you do this. It gives you the same end result. Uh, now we're gonna add recipients for this envelope. So I'm gonna go to room participants. Um, oh, I don't know why I'm there twice, but so Alex is my client. I have to sign this um, because it's a listing. So if I have to sign it, you do have to add yourself. I don't know why Alex and I are doubled, but that's okay. Uh, and I'm going to add Jess because once my client signs these listing documents, I want it to be sent to her so that she can input the listing for me. So, Erin, over... is this yeah. putting them in order of signing? It's yeah, not... so over here on the left, these numbers oh. right here, that's what that's for is choosing the order. So if this is a listing, I want to sign my listing before my client. So I'm going to stay as number one. I'm going to name my client number two. And then I'm going to name Jess number three. So what this is doing is my client will not receive an email about these documents until I have signed them. Jess will not receive an email until my client has signed them because unsigned listing documents are no good to Jess. There's no point sending them to her. So she doesn't need them until after your client has signed them. Also, Jess does not need to sign. She just needs to view. Okay. Now there's two that are quite similar. So needs to view and receives a copy are pretty similar. The difference is uh, needs to view will force them to open up the documents in DocuSign so that DocuSign can track that they were opened. Receives a copy will just send them an email with them with the documents as an attachment, which means it doesn't get tracked in DocuSign that they opened them. It's up to you how you use them. Um, if you like having the proof that somebody opened something, you should use needs to view. If you're not worried about that, then receives a copy is fine. I, I thought we had to have proof that they signed it and the timing. Yes, signed it, yes. But this is just needs to view. 
So they're not signing it, they're just getting it. Yes, but shouldn't we? Um, yeah, Jess, is just, Jess okay. is just receiving it at the office, that's all. No, no, I realize that. Okay, thanks. Um, now, like, if, it, if this was an offer and it's going to the other agent or whatever, um, you might want to keep it on needs to view so that you can see that they've opened the document. When it's attachment, you don't know that they opened it. The same as regular email. If you're attaching it um, to a regular email from Gmail, you have no idea if they opened it or not, unless they text you and say that they've received it, which they usually do. But if you do it in DocuSign and says needs to view, you're going to get notified when they open it. And at this point, would you be putting the lawyer in? Why did you add the lawyer? Where would you add that? Um, I wouldn't on listing docs, probably. But whenever you send the documents to the lawyer now is when you can send them through DocuSign. Okay, so the lawyer is on the list earlier. No, I didn't add a lawyer. Oh, okay. I'm just, I was sorry, I was giving examples of who you can add in there. Okay. Um, but yeah, so your, your timing isn't going to change. Whatever you do now, whenever you send it to the lawyers, when you're going to send it in DocuSign. Because when you're sending it to the lawyer, they want a cut sheet and, you know. Yeah. So, and it's up to you. You can still use a regular email with the lawyer or you can put it in here. In here, just like I said, it gives you the proof that they've opened it. Okay. So then down here, you're going to choose the email subject and the email message. So listing docs, one, two, three, eight, three, whatever you want to say. Just keep in mind that everybody on this list will see this message. So if you're including your client and the agent on the other end of a deal uh, in the same envelope, make sure that the message is okay for both of them to see or don't include them in the same envelope. So then whatever you want to say to your client there. So now we're going to click next and it's going to open up those documents that we've added. I think someone's mic's unmuted. Mike Arthur? Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this opens up the documents here now. Um, so we're going to place where we need signatures and initials. So over on the left, you'll see my name here with the yellow dot, and then all of these fields are yellow. If I click here, it opens up a drop down menu, and Alex's name is also here, and his are blue. So if I click on his, all these turn to blue. So when I bring these fields over, whatever color they are, that's who needs, who I'm saying needs to sign there. So I don't need to initial this page because I'm the agent, but Alex, my client does. So I'm going to bring over a blue initial box. Then on the next page, I don't have to sign, but my client does. So I'm going to bring over a blue signature box. Now, date signed, I'm going to put that in the date field because that is going to, nobody fills in this box. DocuSign automatically does whenever Alex signs the paperwork. So the date will be as he's signing it, which is required on electronic with electronic signatures. Um, so you're just going to go through and add all the initials that your clients need to do here. You can make the boxes bigger or smaller, doesn't matter. Um, one note to make, so let's just pretend for a second that a couple is on this listing. So they both need to initial here. If you click on one, hold shift on your keyboard and click on the other, it puts that box around it. Then if I press control C on my keyboard, that's copying it. Uh, if you're on using a Mac, it would be command C, not control C. So now when I scroll to the next page, I can press control V, which is paste. It's going to put both those boxes in the same spot of the page. And on agreements and or most documents from web forms, they need initials in the same spot on every page. So it will save you a bit of time rather than clicking and bringing everything over. Um, if you don't know control C, control V, things like that, you can click the shortcuts button and it will tell you here. So, oh, I just got to chat one sec. 
Oh, awesome too. Thank you. Um, I don't see. Oh, here's paste. So control V, copies, control C. Mm. Okay, so you can um, click the shortcuts button. It will tell you what they are. Control C, control V is um, standard across every program. Uh, it's not a DocuSign thing. But it does save you a lot of time, especially if you have multiple people signing. Um, so I just my seller is going to sign here. I'm going to put date signed for him. The agent, who is me, is going to sign here, date signed, etc. So you're just going to go through this whole, all this paperwork, and put in all the boxes there. Um, so a couple other fields that you may need are text boxes. So if you missed something, maybe you meant to put something in additional provisions and you forgot when you were in DocuSign, you can add a text box here and type it in. Oh. Um, one important piece of information about this is make sure it is in your color. If that was in blue, um, then when I send this to my client, he could change the text. Oh. And we typically don't want our clients changing any text. So make sure it's assigned to you. That means your clients can't do it. Now you could assign it to the read only. Yeah, I was just gonna say you can assign it to your clients, but then you have to make sure you check off read only. So it just kind of highlights it to them when they're signing, um, but they can't do anything to it. So that's another option. Also, if you bring a field over in the wrong color and you don't have to delete it, you can click on it and then change it over here. So whenever you're clicked on a certain field that you just brought over, the menu on the right becomes the menu for that, that field. So the recipient, I can change, I can change different things. I can change the text in here if I wanted to. Um, yeah, so whenever you click on a field, the menu on the right is for that field that you're clicked on. You can change the text and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't matter. Um, another field that you may need is you can click on this pencil that's markup tools and there's a line. So if you needed to cross something out, you can use the line. Uh, you could put an X through a whole clause if you needed to. Remember, if you're doing that, you have to add initial boxes next to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there's also check boxes. Um, so either you can do the check box yourself or so like say you received an offer on one of your listings and you're sending it to your seller to sign and then you have to check accept, reject or counter. Nine times out of 10, you probably, probably more than that. You already know if they're, you've already talked to them. You already know if they're accepting, rejecting or countering. Um, so you can just check the correct one off, or you could put a check box on all three options and they can check off the one that they're choosing. Um, just keep in mind, the more flexibility that you give to your clients, the more room for error there is going to be. So if you, if you check all three, so it's except, so, so you know, they're going to reject and counter. They, yeah. So how do they, if they touch one of them, they have an option to touch all three? How do they Yeah, they could the check two? all three if they wanted to. So like you need to make sure your client is okay at this kind of stuff. Okay, I'm not really sure what you're saying. We're checking in advance all three. And when they get it. So you're putting a check box, you're not checking. So you're essentially giving them the check box. Um, so oh. like here, I can put all three check boxes here. Oh, okay. And then when they're signing it, they're going to double click in the one they want to choose. Okay. Okay. But yeah. like I said, the more Dangerous. power you give your client, the more room for error there's going to be. They might check off all three except reject and counter, and then you're going to have to redo it. Yeah. Okay. But that is an option. Most times I would say you're just going to add the checkbox yourself and check it off because you're going to know what they want to do. Okay, so I'm not going to add any more fields. That's plenty for this. 
Um, so another quick thing. So if I'm not clicked on a field, if I just click on the document, the menu on the right just becomes like a little overview of all of the pages here. So you'll see on this page, there's a little blue tab on these both of these pages. So blue is Alex's color. So that means Alex has at least one thing to do on this page and at least one thing to do on this page. And there's no yellow tab, so I have nothing to do. So you're going to quickly scroll through these um, and make sure every page has a, your client's tab at least once um because they typically have to do something on every page i guess the input form would be an exception to that they don't have to do anything on the input form on every page except for sign the last page um so you, if this is an agreement or an offer or whatever like you're gonna make sure no pages have no tabs or else you missed assigning them an initial box on that page right so it's just a quick overview and like in real life, me as the agent, I should not be signing this page. So I can be like, oh shoot, I shouldn't have added that. Same here. I should only be signing the last page. So just a quick overview to make sure you have initials and signatures in the right spots. So how are you removing if you put one in that you weren't supposed to? Uh, so you just click on it. I'm just clicking delete on my keyboard. You can click delete over here. Okay. Doesn't matter. Keyboard is probably easier. And Erin, where you put that initial through the cross through, you also have to have a date in there, right? Yeah, so there should be a date sign field here too. So then once you have everything placed that needs to be done, you're just going to click send. So because I named myself as the first recipient, my client is not receiving this right now. So I haven't signed it. And he, because I put him as number two, he will not receive the document until I sign. So when this refreshes here, it says needs my signature. So I'm just gonna click on it, click sign. So you can see here actually, current is just me and I need to sign. And then waiting to receive the documents is Alex and Jess. So they're not gonna receive this until I go ahead. So make sure if you're doing it this way, make sure you actually remember to sign it or your client's never gonna get it. <laughs> so I'm going to sign here, click finish. I'm just going to log into Alex's email and sign so that we can carry on. He's out getting our groceries right now. <laughs> So you can see it says waiting for others. If I click on this, I can see like where it got stuck. So uh, in the completed section is me, I'm done. Current is Alex, so we're waiting on him to sign and then Jess is waiting to receive it. So as soon as Alex signs, Jess will get it. So I'm just signing for Alex here now. So I now have an email saying that Alex viewed it. So I know that that's happened. And now I'm just gonna log into listings. And I'm just gonna open the document from Jess's email so that we can be changed to completed on our end. So if I refresh my DocuSign here now, oh, that's gonna yell at me because I was just in Alex's. So you can see um, now completed is both me and Alex and current is Jess. So we're waiting for Jess to view because all she needs to do is view. She's not signing. I don't really understand how you found that page, that listing docs. Where did you find that? Um, I just refreshed it. Um, so if I go into my envelopes tab, uh, if I click on the envelope, that's what will open up. Okay. 
Okay, so I just opened the document from Jess's account. I'm just gonna delete these out of her email before she doesn't, actually she's used to me using her for training. So now if I refresh this page again, it should say we're all completed. Everybody has completed their things. So I can view the documents. So also, I'll just quickly show you my email. So in my email, um, I got it that I sent it to me. Um, Alex view, I got an email that Alex viewed. I got an email that Jess viewed. And then I got the completed email. So once everybody who has to do something to the documents has done it, you'll get the completed email. And so does everybody involved. So Alex and Jess both also have the completed email. Um, so your clients will automatically have the um, completed documents. Did you mention you can rearrange documents in an order so clients can sign them in order, for example, as you gave as you gave work? Uh, no, I didn't mention that, but I can go through that, Chris, just one sec. I didn't know that everybody got the completed one. Yeah. I thought they only had the one that they completed, like a copy of that. So I was always sending, once everybody signed, then I was sending everybody the sign. Yeah, no, they automatically get it. Um, I just deleted Alex's, but yeah, Alex and Jess both had the email saying um, completed and it was attached to the bottom. So if I go into this one, like all of the completed documents are attached. So we all get the same email, this one here. And I can see, everyone can see all of the signatures. Erin, so yeah. if it, Jessica's getting it at this point. If she finds a signature missing, yeah. um, what's the procedure for us? We go back to our envelope? So what you can do, um, let me get so, out so of this. So it was my fault and I didn't mark a spot for someone to sign. Yeah, so. I could redo it and send it. Yeah, so if we're in the documents tab, um, so let's say, so we didn't, I didn't have Alex sign um, this form. So let's say Jess says, comes back and says, you did, your client didn't sign the input form. So what you're gonna do, actually let's use a different form for example. Let's say we missed something on the SDBA. Okay. Uh, because we already have signatures on this. So you're gonna create a new envelope. So you're gonna go to envelopes, new. We're gonna, what are we gonna name this one? Like Miss Signature. Uh, we're gonna add a room doc and we're gonna choose the signed SDBA. And we're gonna add recipient. We're gonna add Alex. Mr. Signature, can you please sign? Whatever you want to say to your client. So we have this here. So it's already signed. This because we added the signed version. So now we're just going to add, I don't know, let's say he was supposed to sign here and he didn't. Okay. And now you're just gonna send it again. I'm not gonna send that, but that's all you would have to do. Um, okay, so I have a message from Chris about rearranging documents in an order for your clients to sign them in order. So for an example, you have to sign, they have to sign the SDBA before they sign anything else. Right. Um, so when you're adding documents, the order that they're added in, you can rearrange them. So like in this case, the SDBA is going to be signed before the residential input, but as I essentially at the same time. Um, so if you want to really space them out, use separate envelopes so send them one envelope with like the sdba wait for them to sign it then send them another one um 
But so with these, so let me just add something else here, WWR. So ideally, realistically, WWR comes first, then SDBA, then input form. So you can move the um, order around here. So then when you come to this section, they're in that order. So we're gonna have WWR first, then SDBA, then input form. And when they sign, like it really takes them in order, they wouldn't sign it in any other order. But like I said, if you want to make the time gap bigger, you'll have to send them in separate envelopes. You can also, no, you can't do that. No, you have to arrange them when you're setting up the envelope. I can't drag them around in here. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, so that's basically how you use DocuSign. Um, I'm just gonna go back to the room that we've created. Uh, I'm gonna delete once, this envelope. Once they're signed, Aaron, yeah. if you've left them, if you've left them the same, if each document, if you've left it WWRI or whatever, mm -hmm. it will upload back into any signed documents will upload back into the spots on on in command. Is that right? No, no, they don't automatically go back to command. No, I was told that anything signed is going to go back to the profile. No. Not that I'm aware of, unless something's changed recently. So I'm just back in command in this. I think Andrew was telling me that his, his were loading over. Hmm. So like you I, could still. I don't know could, what this button does. Let me see. Do you know where the documents then were? Um. You can do it this way. Yes, so, he, he said you can do it that way, but he said the kind of, I think they were coming up under custom folder or something. They were coming somewhere, but anything signed was coming over. And he said it takes a little while to, for it to like, for it to, like he said he would leave and come back and they would show up there eventually. Hmm. Yeah. Was weird. I did not know that, but that would be nice. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. It is Andrew. <laughs> I do know, like, so now if we're not doing this yet, remember, but when we are, so when I want to attach the WWR to this listing, I can click from DocuSign and choose WWR signed. And now it's attached there. And then like SDBA. Just make sure you're choosing the signed version. Sorry, I have no idea what you just did. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do it yet. She's essentially grabbing so that we have the documents that were signed. We have them in our file inside command. She's going and she's she's click. Okay, there's my WWRI working with a realtor. She's adding the file and grabbing it from DocuSign. So now mm -hmm. it's in our file in command underneath the person's name. Because eventually this is how this screen is where you're going to submit paperwork to the office. Uh, we're just trying to work out a bunch of bugs before we roll it out. Um, and then obviously this, the COVID-19 is going to slow down the rollout because we're going to have to get to every office to do training on it. And we won't be doing that for a while. Um, but it's so still, yeah, a, we just it's need still to work a good out folder. The, like it's still a sorry? good place to put everything. Yeah, yeah. You can know. still store things here if you want to. Because I find that DocuSign, you know, it has an, all the unsigned ones and it has mm -hmm. signed ones and then you have to go in there when yeah. if you're working in command anyways, you just have to click on this, on this uh, opportunity or this yep. whatever, this listing and there your files are, right? So it's, it's a good holder. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah. Because we use, we use uh, dot loop right now as yeah. our holder. Yeah. 
Um, so going back to DocuSign, I just wanted to point out now in the Documents tab, I originally uploaded three documents, but now there's seven. Um, so every document, you're going to have the original that you uploaded as well as the signed. Um, and then it's going to also create this certificate. So the certificate um, is something that's required with electronic signatures. It's basically just tracking who signed what, when, and from what IP address. Um, it's not something you ever really are going to need unless there's an issue with your paperwork. If you, um, if you typed in the date versus doing the date signed field, you're going to need to send this to the office. Now, um, should, we, should we take this document and put it on file in command anyways? Like if we're going to use command as our holder, is it good yeah. to take this and put it there anyways? You definitely can, yeah. Um, just keep in mind, if you're sending this to anybody else, your client's email address will be there. Uh, where was that? Yeah, like his email's right there. Um, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, but just keep it in mind. Um, but yeah, so that's, you can look at the history as well. So there's all the history from what I've done today. Not much um, to do there, just if you ever needed it for something. But yeah, that's basically how you use DocuSign. Awesome. Thank you, Erin. No worries. Any questions? Um, yeah, Erin. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Uh, okay, thank you. Just when you want to get people the double sign thing, what do you mean to have it that it just it just saves you? you have two, two, two people needing their signatures? So the copying and pasting you mean, how I was quickly yes. dropping them on each page? Yep. Please. So um, it's a lot of keyboard work, so it's hard to explain because you can't see what I'm doing with my fingers. But so essentially, you would put a field in each spot here. So Joe's signature and Sally's signature, or initial, sorry, Joe's yes. initial and Sally's initial. You'd place them that, like by pulling them over. You would click on one, hold shift down on your keyboard and then click on the other. Let me just go in and do it so you can see what happens. Okay, so let's pretend we are selling our house and we are both the sellers. Um, when this comes up, so on this first page, I'm going to pull Alex's initial over. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make it a little smaller because I have OCD when it comes to that. Then I'm gonna pull my initial over. Yep. So they're both there. We have a yellow and a blue. So I'm going to click on one, hold shift down on my keyboard and click on the other. So it puts that box around them. Okay. Sorry, Alex is just coming home so my dogs might bark. I'm sorry. Um, so now that this box is around them, I'm going to press control C, which means copy. Okay. Scroll to the next page and press control V, which is paste. And it's going to paste those two initial boxes. Okay. So like I said, the shortcuts button at the bottom of the screen here tells you, so copy is right. control C, paste is control V. Okay, super, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Mike, did you have a question too? Aaron, this is Chris. Yeah. Oh yeah, hi. Can you hear? I'm having a problem still with uh, um, the time uh, stamps are showing uh, like Pacific time. Oh. I've followed your little video to a T and made those oh, changes really? and I'm still having issues. Yeah. Hmm. 
we may have to reach out to support them um because that's what you're supposed to do um so yeah we'll have reach out to support and, and, I guess. The, and the odd thing is one of Okay, because one uh, the other thing is one of my clients was fine, but then yeah. when I, he went to sell a second property, it's we're all like you know Central Time or Pacific, whatever. But they they weren't Atlantic, put it that way. And um, I, and I went through you know, again to make sure my times were all aligned, and uh, no, it still wouldn't wouldn't work. So, Stupid yeah. question, okay. but was he in Nova Scotia? Check up with sport. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we'll have to reach out to support, I guess, because that's how you're supposed to fix that problem. But I'll email you when we're done. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, it's uh, David James here. Um, yeah. Just curious about the initials. You had mentioned when you bring the initial boxes down to the uh, like the middle pages and that um, that you didn't put a um, date signed there. Is it? because you have that stamp, you don't need it for initials? Um, that's more of a broker question and it's kind of a gray area. Some brokers say you need the date stamp with every single initial and some say you just need them with signatures as long as it's on every document at least once. Um, I'm gonna reach out to Anne to get more clarification on that because it seems to come different depending on who you talk to. So I'm going to talk to Anne and I'll send out a clarification email to all agents. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. No problem. That was great, Erin. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, no worries. Erin. No worries. Have a good Thank one. you very much. Be See safe. you at quarantine hour. Yep. Wash your hands. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye.